I'm Sky. Sky. Yeah, nah, my let's get right into it. You haven't been picked up before. Wow, so <laughs> getting right into it. I didn't even honestly, no, I don't think I can say honestly, I never have. I like art, a good picnic, I like food, I love to cook. Wow, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> damn, that's crazy. I guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, record number, new article coming out, uh, record number of men aren't getting married anymore. You know, in many ways, um, being a former married guy, if you were to ask me and my family and everybody before I, I went through the ringer, uh, is marriage a good thing? And I would say, yeah, yeah, I'd say marriage is a good thing. Uh, it keeps societies together. That's the right way to have a family, the right way to have kids, um, the right way to be happy for the rest of your life. Boy, was I wrong. And and not only did I find this out, but many of you that are not married now have found out by the way we're treated by wives and the courts and everything else. Well, the message is getting out there. This is from uh, Tyler Durden over at Zero Hedge. Let me zoom this up a little bit so you guys can see it a bit better. Record number of 40 year olds have never been married. Now, when I read the article, they're talking about men and women. So you might say, well, Joker, your thumbnail isn't accurate because it's men and women that are not getting married. But let's face it, women control the bedroom and the access to sex. Men control marriage. They're the ones that decide, you know what? I think we should do this forever. I'm going to keep and hold you and honor and cherish until divorce do us part when you leave me and take half my money. Uh, so this is... Um, uh, what he says here, according to a new analysis of Census Bureau data by the Pew Research uh, Center, a record number of 40-year-old Americans who had never been married reached a record high in 2021. Uh, and this is from July 3rd of this year, so I guess the data is just rolling in now. A quarter of 40-year-olds in the United States have never been married. So that's, you know, at 40, here's the thing, at 40, um, I could see I could see men saying, well, I'm not really married by 40 because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just reaching my own and I'm getting out there and, and finally making some money and, and making my name in the world. And I feel like I'm ready for a family. But when they include women in this number, that's really telling because that means there's a lot of women that are not married by 40. And let's face it, I hate to say this to ladies, but it has, if it hasn't happened by 40, that is a huge warning sign for men. And also you're now, it's kind of like eating, it's kind of like eating the banana when it's completely brown and really mushy. It's super sweet, <laughs> but it's really not good anymore because the best years are behind you. And women hate to hear this. Women hate to hear this. But the truth, and, and the best years usually of a man are 30 and onward, 35 and onward. That's kind of where you're finding out who you are, getting your legs underneath you, getting some money, getting some confidence. Uh, you know, it takes a little while for men to ramp up because what are men appreciated for? Stoicism, strength, money, ability to support what they give to the person they married. Women are not. Women are for their youth and their beauty and their fertility. That's gone or leaving very quickly. Uh, for a lot of women by the age of 40. And maybe for, maybe women say, okay, but yeah, I got five or 10 years left until I start getting the real bad wrinkles and everything starts sagging. Yeah, we know. That's why men know that getting in, involved with a 40 or 45 year old versus a 25 year old is kind of a bad deal. There's 20 years of youth, fertility and beauty that are slowly waning. And women get so mad at hearing this, but all we're doing is telling you the truth. It's the same thing as like what women, why don't you go out and find yourself, you know, a confident, uh, masculine, rich 25 year old. Well, they don't exist. What makes women mad though, is that men are still almost perpetually growing in value where women decline and they hate that. But all it really means is women need to secure a good man by their 25 and, and stay with him and be nice to him and keep him around and let him keep her around. And if women get so mad hearing that just, it's just the way things work. Blame nature. Anyway, 
40 uh, percent, quarter of 40 percent uh, year olds haven't been married. Uh, most live alone with just 22 percent of never married 40 to 44 year olds living with a romantic partner. The findings revealed a downward trend of delaying marriage or foregoing it altogether among people born or after the 1960s, according to the report. In 1980, only 6% only of 40-year-olds had never been married. That increased by 5 percentage point per decade until 2021. The trend is notable because the share of 40-year-olds who had completed at least a bachelor's degree was much higher in 2021 than 1980. 39% versus 18% said Richard Fry, a Pew senior researcher. More highly educated 40-year-olds are more likely to have married, but the growth of this group has not revised or reversed the overall trend of delaying or foregoing, foregoing marriage. Sure, but why is that? Because it used to be men got the vast majority of degrees, men made the money, men were the providers, and women were like, I'm pretty and I'll have children and be a stay-at-home mom and I'll take care of the kids and you go make the money. And men were like, I accept this arrangement. But since women have turned around and now women are the majority of, of people getting college degrees, especially in, in upper, um, upper scholastic achievement, I guess you could say. And on top of that, they're taking out hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. Then they show up to a guy and they say, I make all the money. And the guy's like, I don't, I don't care. I don't have access to that. Well, I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And a man's like, yeah, I don't want to pay that back. Um, I'm not going to be a stay-at-home mom or I'm not going to be a cook. I'm not going to take care of the kids. You do it. Well, we know how that turns out. And so what happens is both people end up working and both people end up having, and now you're, you're both doing the same job. And then everybody says, oh, but there's so much money. Yeah, but then, then you end up having kids and send them off to a daycare and something else. It doesn't work. It just, it's proving over time it's not working. They said the Pew, re report, uh, the Pew report found that 40-year-old men were more likely to have not been married than women in 2021, with 28% of men and 22% of women falling into this category. Now, here's what I find interesting, right? They say 40-year-old uh, men and 40-year-old women um, were, most, were more likely not to have been married, 28% of men and 22% of women falling into this category. That, okay, since it's 50% men and 50% women, that adds up to be 50% of people that are not married. So, I mean, but here they say it's 39 versus 18. So I'm not sure what the difference is in the data. Um, they say Pew Analysis noted that many unmarried 40-year-olds in, in previous decades ultimately married later in life. That's more than likely than men. And it's probably retirement age people after the kids have all left. About one in four of the 40-year-olds who were not yet married in 2001 had wed by the time they turned 60. So maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, both families or maybe everybody has the kids or the woman, woman has the kids or the man has the kids. They leave, they become empty nesters, and then they find each other in the golden years of retirement uh, when, when, you know, he's, he's still providing and he still has the money and she's just company for him, I guess. If the pattern continues, the research center predicts that a similar share of never married 40 year olds would also get married in the coming years. I don't think that's gonna change for a lot of guys, for guys. Now maybe women, I know there's a whole lot of women. As a matter of fact, I'll pull up a video. I just thought of a video I, I posted on Twitter. I'll pull it up. Um, I know there's gonna be a larger number of women because women wanna retire and they don't wanna work and then they want to be able to have a man to support them in their later years. You know, and, and men are kind of like, well, what do I get out of it? I don't get the youth. I don't get the beauty. I don't get the sexuality. I just get, a, you know, someone to ride on my coattails because I've been single and very successful in many cases. Uh, the research center conducted the analysis to look at how marriage rates have changed among 40-year-olds in the United States from 1850 to 2021. The report comes as birth rates and marriage rates in the United States have declined for decades. Meanwhile, a 2022 report from the University of Virginia's National Marriage uh, Project found the median age of first marriage has increased over the last 50 years from 23 in 1970 to about 30 in 2021 for men and from 21 in 1970 to 28 in 2021. There's a, I mean, that's a decade of, of youth, beauty, and fertility that women are giving to the players, the, the pool boys, the hot dudes, 
and taking it away from the husband. And then they show up with a body notch count of like 30 or 40 and bad habits and college debt and everything else. And they're like, okay, wife, wife me up. Only to turn around at the end of that after five or six or seven years and say, oh, I miss, I miss being playful and having all the attention of different men and I want to go back out. And then they get divorced and go out and do their thing. I mean, these numbers are, these numbers are there. Uh, but later in marriage may not necessarily mean a better one. 81% of husbands who married earlier said they were satisfied in their marriages. Uh, those are the ones that are still married, obviously, because if they're divorced, they don't count as a married person. Compared to 71% who married later, the report found, uh, there were similar results among women, although with smaller differences, 73% of earlier married women were satisfied compared to 70% of later women. I find this telling. 81% of men married earlier are happy and women, 71, or excuse me, 73% of uh, earlier married women. So even when you're younger, the men are like, this is what I want. I'm good with this. I'm fine settling down. I'm fine providing. I'm fine having one woman, even though supposedly men are players and just want to sow their seeds and go out and bang everything. 81% of men are like, I'm good. I'm, I'm done. I'm good. 8% uh, less of women. So there's more women out there that are definitely like, no, nah, I want to keep playing. Uh, rise of the single people. The decreasing marriage rate has led to a spike in the number of people living alone. As of 2021, 37 million Americans live alone, according to census data. There are various reasons marriage is losing ground in America. Uh, some of them are societal. I agree with that. There's very little public stigma around being single. I can agree with that. That's true. Uh, other factors include the sexual revolution. Yes, women going out, being on birth control, and being able to sleep with whoever and however many men they want to the feminist movement, yep, definitely, and declining rates of religious observance. I agree. They don't say in here the divorce statistics, and that is part of it, I really, truly believe. However, this phenomenon is not confined to the United States as marriage and birth rates have fallen in much of the world, including Europe and Japan. While not all adults living alone are lonely, many are, and these individuals are more likely to lack significant uh, social connections, which can be deadly. This is one of the things I keep talking about, you young guys out there. You have to put in the effort to make a friend group. You have to make an effort to, to connect with people. However, once you do, they're usually very easy to maintain. You know, I, I have a friend, his name is Ed. We were in the military together. We were best mates. We hung out all the time. He's a guy that's from the UK, uh, from, I think he was from Manchester or just out, or Canterbury. That's where he was from. He was from Canterbury. Um, we were best friends for four, five, six years in the military and, and throughout that time period of my life. He stayed in the military and went to California. I left and started my own adventure. Like once every five years, he'll text me or give me a phone call. He's like, hey, man, we talk for a couple of minutes. We catch up a little bit. And then we stop talking again for another four or five years. And it's because things are, you know, kind of steady for both of us in our lives now. But if he were here, if he just was like, hey man, I just bought a property next door. 15 minutes, we're best friends again. You know, we'd share all the things and then we'd probably be just like we were in our 20s. So that's why it's really important to make a good group of friends um, and, and solidify it. You know, you don't, have to, you don't have to keep up with it very much as a dude. Women, women do because they're social butterflies. Uh, according to uh, a recent report from the US Surgeon General titled Our Ep Epidemic of Loneliness and Isolation, Loneliness is more than just a bad feeling. It harms individual and societal health. It's associated with greater risk of cardiovascular disease, dementia, stroke, depression, uh, this big deep sadness, uh, infection, anxiety, and premature life ending. According to the report, the effect on mor uh, mortality of being socially disconnected is similar to that of smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day and is even greater than those of obesity and physical inactivity. Large population studies have documented that among initially healthy people tracked over time, those who are more socially connected live longer, and those who experience uh, social uh, deficits, including isolation, loneliness, and poor quality relationships are more likely to end earlier, regardless of the cause, according to the report. Um, now, here's something that's interesting, right? There was a story that I was reading, um, and while I, while I speak here, let me find my post on, on Twitter that I was talking about. Um, there was this, uh, a, they called them, I think they called them blue zones, if I remember correctly. Um, blue zones, which were areas in the world where people had a very high 
life longevity, like near 90 or 95 or 100 years old. And, um, oh, here's here's the post that I found. Okay, let me I'll bring that up and prepare it. Um, and they started looking into it. And one of the things was, number one, they, they ate healthy. They ate natural foods. They, f like fishing villages. They ate fish and they ate vegetables and they ate rice. They stayed away from the carbohydrates and the sugars and the processed food and everything else. The other thing they found is they were they were active. So even you know, people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, they're riding their bikes to get some, like one place was in Asia, I remember reading, and I don't remember where in Asia, but they rode bikes several miles a day to, to do their chores and to go buy food and to go visit their friends. They rode bikes, they stayed physically active. And the third thing was they had a reason to get up in the morning. They had a job to go to, and maybe it wasn't necessarily a job they needed to fund themselves, but it was a, a busy job or they went to go fish for their food, or they, they went to go visit friends. They had a good, they had, they had a reason to get up in the morning. And they had a society of, of people that they liked hanging out with. There was purpose in life. And I genuinely believe after hearing so many stories of like one spouse passing away, and then the other spouse quickly passes, I think people are just like, I don't wanna, they, they can will themselves into not waking up in the morning. I do genuinely believe that, especially when you're old, because it's, it's easy. I know many times in my 20s, there were many days I didn't want to will myself into getting up and or continuing on, uh, yet I woke up every day. I think there's a difference when you're 20 versus uh, when you're 20 or when you're 95. Uh, here's, the, here's the video I was talking about. Now, you can tell she does have makeup on, and I can't really zoom in very well because it, it doesn't let me. Um, but if you look at the skin, she's she's probably a product of, you know, she might have been in her 20s, probably sometime in the 80s, maybe the 90s, because her she this was the era of the tanning beds and the and the tan, and actually getting sun, you know, copper tan sun lotion, which was basically like baby oil, um, getting super dark skin. It has ravaged her skin. Number two, I'm guessing she's probably a smoker because of her voice, uh, because you can see uh, Richard Cooper sent this. He said, your typical man of swamp female red pill grifter in a few de or, uh, decades. My comment on it, however, was this. Her voice sounds like that of a 60 year old chain smoking uh, truck driver named Big Joe and the skin on her chest looks like a gator's back. Hmm, why is she single? Should have gotten and kept a good man 35 years ago, ma'am. Well, I'll, I'll go back to Rich's uh, here because it's easier to hear. And let me pause it, pause. Okay, there's the there's the control. And let me turn up the volume a little bit. She was, I'm guessing, she was probably very pretty in her 20s. She might have even had a man and had kids. But more than likely, like most women, she walked away. Statistic, and, and we can always say, oh, it might have been the man that dumped her. Yeah, it might have been. But statistically speaking, it's the women that initiate divorce. So it is more likely, and this is why I say, she probably left him than him leaving her. Although after she left, he was probably happier for it. I want you to listen, because now she's in her 50s and she's like, oh, well, we don't want to be alone, guys and gals. Let's get together. But she had kids. So she was either an unwed mother, a single mom. That's her fault. Or she, she probably had a guy. And after the kids were gone, she decided, hey, you know what? Maybe when she was 35 or 40 or whatever, she's like, I'm still hot. Guys pay attention to me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to venture out there and see what's out there for me. And now reality has crashed home and that's what's happening for a lot of women out there. Uh, let me play this so you can hear it. We all know by now that being over 50 and being single and trying to find someone compatible as a companion is like finding a needle in a haystack. Let me put a pin in that. I'm 50. I have no problems in dating. I know this because I, I'm dating. I, and, and they're not 50-year-old women that sound like truck drivers. They're much younger women. They're attractive. I, I technically should, just say, should say she because I'm only seeing one. It's not impossible. But for women, it is because their value changes. Men continue to increase, women decrease. And depending on the man's value, her age can really decrease, i.e. see Hugh Hefner back in the day when he had, I don't know, five wives or whatever it was because he knew he was on his way out. I don't think he had any kids and he didn't feel like, well, what am I going to leave my fortune to? He's like, doesn't matter. I'm going to be off this planet. 
So what's he doing? He's going around hooking up, marrying a bunch of hot, like 20 something Playboy models. Uh, look at um, uh, Rolling from Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. I think he's having a kid and, and now he's getting engaged maybe. And she's like 28 or 30 and she's hot. Why? Because men's value increases and women's don't. And now she's discovering she's definitely on the backside of the hill and she's crashing down very quickly. There's a million of us out there that are all in the same boat and yet we're alone. And I can't wrap my head around it. I think to myself, we both have our own incomes. We both have our own dwellings. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Not to a man. Because those are resources. Man, men do not, she would not date a man that needs her resources. So she only wants to date men that have resources. Well, he doesn't need yours. So, the, so that's like walking up to a billionaire and going, I'm worth a million dollars. Do you want me? Billionaire would be like, no, I'm good. Why would I need you? The other thing I notice is her face is very, like she's, there's, there's not a lot of expression in her face. So more than likely, it, it's probably three pounds of Botox and plastic filling in her face at this point because there's not any expression or wrinkles on her face and there probably should be. What's making it so difficult? And I wish I could find the answer to that. And I don't want to be alone. And there's so many of you that don't want to be alone. And I definitely don't want my kids thinking, oh, gee, mom's having dinner alone tonight. Or, you know, someone's dad is having dinner alone tonight. I don't understand why. And hopefully we can figure this out. And if you have any ideas of why, let me know. Well, I know why. I'm talking about it right now, as a matter of fact. And here's the thing too, right? I don't talk about this much, um, but it is, it is definitely a, an advantage that men have. If a guy has a lot of male friends and they're close by, he's got a friend group. He's got someone to joke and, you know, go shoot pool or darts with on maybe on a weekend. And if he belongs to another group, uh, cause I did this myself well, when I lived in Raleigh, North Carolina, there was a group that either on, on Saturday, we'd go get coffee in the morning, uh, maybe coffee and breakfast. We'd go for a motorcycle ride for several hours. Uh, and then three, four, five in the afternoon when the motorcycle riding was done, um, some of us would meet up afterwards and go out and have a couple of beers, or we'd meet up the next day and go have a couple of beers. Uh, and then midweek, you could go out and belong to a pool league. And then you're shooting pool with various people. And then um, what else? Uh, there's dart leagues out there. Um, I had, a, a, you know, various hobbies. And then I had a couple of friends that I'd just hang out with one-on-one. -on -one, and we'd go out to the, you know, to the to a pub and maybe watch some girls take their tops off. Because that's what we we're just guys. That's what we did. And then if you're a guy that says, well, but I, I don't. Like I do want to have interactions with women and I'm not good looking enough. Um, well, then don't bother dating. Just save up a couple of hundred bucks a month and go rent, a, rent, a, rent somebody, rent a woman for like an hour or two. It's easier than ever. And who's the one that says this is acceptable and a good thing to do? The women. They're the ones that are like, hey, this, you know, spicy work is real work. And don't shame women that want to do that. Okay, great. So it costs you a few hundred bucks and then you get your little bit of one-on-one -on -one time and, you know, empty the sack and then go home, take a nap. This is, the, the world is great for men. I mean, it really is. And it's not great to have a family. It's not great to, you know, have a traditional life, but it's still great. Who's it really suck for right now? For, it sucks for women. And they're the ones that did it to themselves. And, and why, has, why has society and the population and, and countries done relatively well for the last several hundred years? And even going back before that, why, why, did, why did things go along pretty smooth? Now, granted, there were conflicts between countries and other things like that. But I mean, when it comes to the family, what's changed in the last 30, 40, 50 years? Well, it's easy. Women entered the workforce. Women wanted college degrees. Women wanted to make their own money. Women wanted to act like men and just sleep around and have fun. Women wanted to do all the things that men were doing. 
but you can't. That's like saying, well, I have a vehicle and I want to tow uh, a 10,000 pound trailer. Easy to do if you have a big SUV or uh, a truck built for that. Not so good if you're a Porsche. Not so good if you're you know, a motor scooter. Not all vehicles are the same. Well, not all people and not all beings are the same. Men are wired differently. I can't get enough people to understand this. Men are just wired differently. We are. You know, I, I, uh, I do not care if I get a scar. I, as long as I'm, I'm more worried about the functioning of my body than the looks of my body. There are many women out there that'd be like, like this woman, a perfect example, like this woman. She can't even move her face. I mean, I'm not going to play the audio again, but if I scrub this video, I mean, there's literally no emotion. Her face is frozen. She doesn't have the function of her face anymore. She can barely blink. She can barely smile. I mean, she doesn't smile. She doesn't frown. She, why? She froze her face to look good with a bunch of fillers. That's beauty over function. Men would rather be like, I don't care about wrinkles and all that, but if I smile, I want people to see it. If it's sunny out, I want to be able to squint. <laughs> you know, it's, it's ridiculous. We're not wired the same, and women are trying to live like men. And the men are still living like men. Well, at least the men that are masculine and actually happy. The men that are trying to li live like women, they're just as miserable. It, it, it just, this is where we're going. And this is why I say to so many of you men out there that are having rough times, that are having bad days, stop looking at what everybody else is doing. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Find a group of like-minded men. Yeah, you know, here, here's another perfect story. And I'll leave it with this as the last story. When I was a cop in the military, I used to work the, <clears throat> the night shift. So we'd go in and I think we worked from like, I want to say 8 p.m. till 5 or 6 a.m. I, I think it was 8 p.m. No, no, maybe it was later, 9 to 6, I think it was. We worked like a 9 to 6 shift. And that's, you can't do anything. I mean, you got to sleep all day. Uh, it's, it's very hard to maintain a normal life. You're like a vampire, right? But when we get off shift, we didn't do it all the time, but maybe once or twice a week, we'd get off shift and it'd be six in the morning and, and there was a local pub and this was in upstate New York, in Utica, New York, uh, the, uh, back when Griffiths Air Force Base was still a thing because that's, that's where I served. We'd get out we, and there was a local pub and you could walk in and I think you had to wait till eight in the morning, something like that. I don't remember exactly. But at eight in the morning, there was a, a pub and it was a pub at night and in the morning, he'd open it up and he had donuts and he had coffee and he had some pool tables. And it was just a retired guy. And he was like, yeah, you know what? I got extra money. I'm going to buy a little place where me and my friends can hang out. And we'd go in there in the morning and we'd go to shoot pool. And the reason why I talk about the what time you could start drinking is because we were off shift. We'd just worked. We would go in there and instead of drinking coffee and donuts, we'd have some cold beers and we'd shoot some billiards, some pool. But at, at the bar there, there was a, probably a 60 or 70 year old bartender. He was the owner. I don't remember his name, but we knew it at the time. And around him, all down this bar was seven or eight or nine retired gentlemen. They were all single. They were all joke. And what did they talk about? They talked about women. They talked about sports. They talked about boobs. They talked about all the things that men talk about pretty much from the time of, you know, hitting 16 until you're dead. And they would joke about it. And they had so much fun. And I remember asking him at the time, I'm like, yeah, hey, you guys seem to have a good thing going on here. How, how long you been doing this? And the guy's like, oh, we've been doing this for years. So the guys have a reason to get up in the morning. And they go in and hang out and have laughs. And they watch sports on TV. And I think uh, at the time they were watching soccer because it was live. But since, but since it was, you know, six o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning, whatever it was, uh, they were watching it live from Europe or something or Australia or something like that. I don't remember, but, and, and they had a great time and we had a great time and there was not a woman to be seen. I don't know of anybody that was even married or dating out of that group. The point is though, that even though we, we joked about women and we were all single and we didn't, that, that there wasn't any wives involved, the men were happy because they had community and they, they were in control of their own destiny. And when you listen to a lot of married guys talk, oh, let me, let me, let me ask the wife. Let me, let me pass this by the wife. Let me make sure the wife won't get mad at me. 
Why? Because ultimately, women want to control the situation. And then when they can, they're unhappy and they don't want that man anymore. That's why jerks tend to have women desiring them. That's why jerks tend to have women wanting them. That's why jerks, and I'm not talking about like bad people. I'm just talking about guys that are like, look, if you don't like it, buzz off. Like I got a lot going on in my life. If you want to be a part of it, be a part of it. If you don't, step off. Those guys seem to do okay with women. It's not because they're jerks. It's because women recognize the fact that man's going somewhere. He's going to be fine. I want a part of that. There's not many men that look at a woman and go, wow, she's got a house and a good business and she's successful. I want a part of that. No guy does that because that woman doesn't want that guy. Women, that, women want the men that provide that stuff. That's why everybody's got everything all screwed up. That's why we're in the place we are today. And that's why I think ultimately men will be fine. It may take, I don't know, another decade or two, but I think the young people growing up today see these women are miserable. They've taken on some ridiculous causes. They don't know what they're doing when it comes to educating because our, our scholastic numbers, at least here in the United States, are falling through the floor. Something like 50 or 60% of students are graduating and they can't even read. They don't know basic, basic math. And these teachers would like pay us more money. Oh, well, you get bad teachers because you don't pay any money. That's not how this works. You got to be, be a good teacher, then you get the money. But see, they get it all backwards. You got women in government that are doing the feelings over facts and you're going to see what happens. And I could call out a bunch of names in our government and other governments that are pretty much making everything fall apart. And, and what happens at the end of this? It either collapses or people realize, hey, you know what? You don't know what you're doing and we're going to stop listening to you and we're going to go back to the way things work. We'll see which happens first. But men are really realizing, you know what? A woman is not the, the path to happiness and community and friends and, and being happy anymore. It's not. You know, the, the wife and kids used to be the center of a man's world. It's not anymore. And could, because it can get yanked out from underneath your feet at any point in time. So what are men doing instead? Community of men. I, honestly, that's why I started Locals. I, well, I started Locals because I kept getting censored on YouTube. And I got tired of it. I'm like, there's topics I want to talk about. And there's topics that men need to hear. And I, I do, you know, everything gets backed up over on Rumble and BitChute and all this. But I, I said, you know something? Uh, locals pushed free speech over everything else. There's one moderator of my content on Locals. Me. And you know how much stuff I've removed? Nothing. There's people that say ridiculous stuff on the forums. I let them and I let other people on the forums correct them and call them out or block them or downvote them or whatever they want to do. I, I, it's the Wild West over there and everybody seems to manage just fine. Why? Because it's self-regulating and self-governing. Well, that's why I did Locals is initially to protect myself from the censorship and stuff. Well, now I do Locals I mean, given a choice, I would drop everything but locals. Why? Because there are men over there, and, and I may only know them by their screen names because they haven't shared their real names. There are men over there that I'm getting to know. Matter of fact, this T-shirt, uh, the ATF one, says ATF, uh, the alcohol, tobacco, and, and pew pews, uh, should be a convenience store, not a federal agency. This shirt was sent to me by one of, one of my viewers. His name's Old Man. So thank you, old man. Um, it's a community now. There are people I'm getting to know. We're becoming uh, friends, in a, in a, but you can have conversations. You know, it's not like men need to hug and stare at each other romantically over a beer to get companionship. We're having conversations. We're shooting the breeze. Now, you can only do that if you're a member. It's $5 a month. Who cares? Like it, It's not much. Now, I know for some of you in, in smaller countries, it's quite an expense. But for the most part, that's nothing. And what do you get out of it? a bunch of posts, you can joke around and you get out of it what you put into it. Well, it's the same thing in everything. You know, you're not going to sit in your backyard and suddenly friends start raining out of the sky and all of a sudden you got a bunch of dudes to hang around with. No, no, you got to put work into it. But once the initial work is done and you've got the friends, the maintenance of friends and the keeping of a, of a, a, a good life is easy. It's just a lot of guys don't put in that initial work. The problem is these women like this, they can put in all the work they want to. She'll have a bunch of gal pals and they can go out and sip on mimosas. But they're never going to find a man with value. 
because the men with value choose younger. They choose prettier. They choose more fertile. Those, uh, there's 50-year-old men dating 20-somethings all day long, 30-somethings all day long. And the women aren't being coerced. They just realize, hey, you know what? This guy's got value. These women didn't recognize men have value. And now they're resigned to, to being alone. And I feel bad. I do feel bad for them. A lot of people, oh, I don't feel bad for them. No, I feel bad for them that they, they, they listened to other feminists. They listened to other women. They listened to their hypergamous nature instead of realizing you're, you're on borrowed time when it comes to relationships. You're on, you're, you're, every day, every day gets worse than the last for finding somebody else when it comes to women. For men, that's not the case. And I, I, I expect all of this to continue. And eventually what will happen, you'll see a whole lot of miserable women, a whole lot of masculine happy men, the, the, the feminine men that are trying to fall in with these women are going to end up just as miserable as they are. And, and I think the ship will eventually right itself. But in the meantime, guys are protecting themselves. They're not getting married. And just like the guy in the initial video that I showed, diving and, and you know, be, tapping out on the, that's what women have done to themselves. They've made their only value because they're so horrible, many of them, many of them, not all, not all. Many of them have made themselves so horrible when it comes to dating and so uh, such a bad value when it comes to marriage and having a family with, the guys are like, uh, my life is good. I got good money, good job, good car, good home, good friends, good life. I just need you for your, for your bonus hole. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other story about the bonus hole thing. I just want to use you for your bonus hole. And women are like, but I, I, I want more than that. No, no, because that's, you act like a man. You, you, in many cases, look like a dude. You work. You provide me nothing that a man doesn't. So I only want the one thing that you can provide that a man doesn't. That's all you are now. You, you've, you've turned yourself into dudes with bonus holes. And I'm not interested other than having the, the bedroom fun. And, and women get very upset at this, but they're the, ones that, they're the ones that started this whole problem. They're the ones that decided to act all masculine and tough and boss girl. And I'm, let me tell you how it's going to be. Okay. We've accepted the deal. And now you have to accept the results of that. Uh, guys, again, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. Movie night, two nights, Saturday. We're going to do Cannonball Run 1 and Cannonball Run 2. Jackie Chan... The bad guy that was Jaws from uh, the old uh, James Bond movie with uh, um, uh, Roger Moore. I forget who that gentleman's name was. He was in Happy, it was Happy Gilmore, I think, too. The big, the big, uh, big, big tall guy. Uh, Burt Reynolds, uh, Dom DeLuise. Like, you just don't get any better than that. I'm telling you. Good movie night tonight. Join us over there uh, for drinks and movies, and we'll see you in the next one.